Hey, ladies! I got my ladies in the house! Hey, power ladies! Green Bear, what are you doing? Oh, hey, storyteller! Hey, Green Bear! Hey, Kay! Well, I was just getting everybody really excited because, as you know... Uh, what do I know? Well, you know that I really love power ladies. For example, Maleficent. Oh, she's so beautiful. Have you seen her lately? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, this lady right here. This one right here? Yeah, she was the first detective in America that was a girl. Can you believe it? She was the first one. And not only was she the first detective, she went out to save a president. I mean, why isn't there a movie about this? It's amazing. Please read this immediately. Okay, power lady, storyteller. Okay, just because you asked so nicely. Okay, thanks. And let me know if you see Maleficent. I will. <laughs> it's like I can hear her beautiful laugh still in my head. It is sort of like that, isn't it? Well, how Kate Warren saved President Lincoln. Real life. Can you believe it? And it's this exciting? It does sound like a movie. Maybe he's right. Maybe we should option the rights and have our first kid time story time movie. Oh, can, can I play her love interest? Uh, of course, because you're the obvious choice. I knew it. One day, in 1856, a young woman arrived at the Chicago office of Alan Pinkerton, founder of the world's first detective agency. The woman's name was Kate Warren. Hey, Kate. She told Pinkerton she was a widow looking for a job. Oh, look at that. Ladies supporting themselves. Pinkerton never thought to hire a woman for a detective's job, but he was curious. Look at his curious face. What would you do in this line of work? He asked her. Well, Kate, who looks quite smart in that whole green ensemble, don't you think? She explained that women were more skilled in obtaining secret information. Oh, how so? Well, men like to brag about their adventures, and women encourage them to talk by pretending to be impressed. Now that... Still true to this day. Women, she said, could also worm out secrets in places where male detectives couldn't go. Oh, he is increasingly in, 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 uh, interested, this Mr. Pinkerton. By the way, lovely office. Oh, Kate, nice matching hat with a pink ribbon. Lovely fashion touch, as well as being a power woman. Well, Pinkerton hired her. The next day, what a forward-thinking fella he was. And just like that, Kate Warren became the first female detective in the nation. She disguised herself in fancy gowns and turned up at society parties. Now, many of the women were married to successful men in business and politics, and they were eager to talk about their husband's careers, especially to Kate, who they thought was one of them. Now, sometimes, check her out. She would dress up as a fortune teller or wore other disguises to parties. She collected very useful information this way. Isn't she clever? Now, one of Kate's first big cases involved a man named Nathan Maroney, who was suspected of stealing money from the company where he worked. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bad boy, Nathan. Now, she assumed the name Madame Imbert to befriend his wife. Oh, Kate knew that Mrs. Maroney would be more likely to tell her secrets to someone who had something to hide as well. Ah, now she's thinking like a criminal mind. So Kate pretended to have a secret, a husband in prison. Before long, she convinced Mrs. Maroney to show her where the stolen money was hidden. And Nathan Maroney was arrested. Wow. That was amazing. That's a mini movie in and of itself right there. She pretended to be a society lady with a husband in jail and be friends. Wow. That is elaborate. She's good. She's good, people. She's good. Pinkerton and his men received glowing praise from the Chicago newspapers for solving the case. But Kate <gasps> was never mentioned. Only a few people knew a woman had saved the day. But Kate Warren's most important role bah, 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 was yet to come. Abraham Lincoln, there he is, there he is, was elected president on November 6, 1860. But many people in the southern states were opposed to his intention to abolish slavery. You know, abolish means end, right? Abolish slavery. By the time he and his family prepared to move from Springfield, Illinois, to Washington, D.C., six states, count them, six states, had seceded from the Union. Seceded means separated from the Union. There were rumors that some Southerners were preparing to stop Lincoln's inauguration. What do they mean by stop? What can they possibly mean by that? 
Pinkerton heard the rumors too. And while in Baltimore on business, he learned that a group calling themselves the Golden Circle was meeting to discuss a secret plan against Lincoln as he traveled to his inauguration. Lincoln's travel route from Illinois to Washington had been reported in all the national newspapers, so that means his schedule was known to everyone, friend and foe alike. You know what foe means, enemy. So his enemies knew his travel route. And I think they want to stop him, don't you? Sure sounds like way. Very nefarious. That's a fancy word for evil. <laughs> nefarious does mean evil. Pinkerton called Kate to Baltimore immediately. Posing as a wealthy woman from Alabama, she infiltrated the Golden Circle by wearing a rosette on her lapel. All members wore such a badge. See the little badge? Little badge there, right there, right there. They wore that badge to signify membership. Kate soon learned of a plot to attack Lincoln as he passed through Baltimore. He'll never leave Baltimore alive, was being whispered on the city streets. Oh no. By now, the president-elect's journey had reached New York City. Lincoln would visit only a few more cities before he reached Baltimore. Kate traveled to New York to meet with a close friend of Lincoln and warn him of the assassination plot. While Pinkerton met directly with the president, the detectives had a plan to keep Lincoln out of danger. What is the plan? Well, Lincoln arrived in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, February 22nd, to attend a dinner in his honor. Now, he was scheduled to take a train to Baltimore on his way to Washington the next morning. But instead, Lincoln would change his route and leave earlier than planned. See, there they are working out the details. An earlier plan. There's our Kate intrepid Kate. That evening, the Pinkerton agency put the plan into action. Lincoln did not stay long at dinner. In his hotel room, he disguised himself in an old shawl to cover his dark suit and a knit cap to replace his familiar top hat. Look at this, people. This is straight out of Hollywood stuff right here. Look at it. Can you even recognize Lincoln? I sure can't. Yeah, me neither. Well, Lincoln and his companions left the hotel from a side entrance that wouldn't be watched, and they took a short carriage ride to the Harrisburg Railroad Station. A private train, private train, of only two cars was waiting to take Lincoln on an unscheduled stop in Philadelphia. Aha! Uh -huh. A route that it has not been publicized so that his enemies don't know about it, so no one will be there. As the train left the station, a Pinkerton agent climbed a telegraph pole along the route and sabotaged the wire so no one could alert secessionists down the line. Wow, so he climbs up here. This was this, this wire, this telegraph pole. It's like the internet back then. So if that's down, it's basically like saying the internet is down and there's no way of letting anybody know that there's a train leaving if anybody happened to spot this train leaving with Lincoln on it. Kate and Pinkerton had already traveled to Philadelphia. Now Kate was waiting at the train station there. Her role was to save a place in the sleeper car for Lincoln and his companions on the train to Baltimore. Now because the sleeper car had curtains, it was the only spot on the train where the president could ride without being seen. A sleeper car, doesn't that sound lovely? It's actually meant for sleeping. It has a little bed, curtains, comfy pillows. But as Kate waited, Oh no, the sleeper car began to fill with passengers. Thinking quickly, she told the conductor, excuse me, that her older brother was coming and that he needed privacy because he was ill and needed rest. The ploy worked. Nobody recognized the president-elect in his disguise as Kate led him on board. Brilliant! Nobody recognized her sick brother. So much cleverness. Are you preparing to be a spy as you're reading this or a detective? This is really good preparation. Their train arrived at Baltimore's President Street Depot in the middle of the night. While Pinkerton stayed with Lincoln, Kate left the train. She would stay in Baltimore and listen for rumors of other plots to harm Lincoln so she could have an ear to the ground. But she must have worried what would come next for the president, the most dangerous part of the journey. The train had reached the end of the line in Baltimore. The railroad workers unhitched the sleeper car from the rest of the train and a team of horses pulled it to a station across town to be hitched to another train. It was the only way the passengers could continue a trip to Washington. For Lincoln, it meant he would be unprotected as a train car moved slowly through downtown Baltimore. This is a perfect opportunity for an attack. But there were no attacks that night. 
No one knew Lincoln was on the train because he wasn't expected until the next day. At last, the car was joined to the final train. Washington, D.C. was only 38 miles away. The plan had worked. Remember, why did nobody know? Because he had snuck out the side exit of the hotel earlier than expected, wearing a disguise, not following the scheduled plan. See how it all worked? Well, the train arrived in Washington shortly after 6 o'clock on the morning of February 23rd. Two weeks later, on March 4th, 1861, Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated as the 16th President of the United States of America. Now, Alan Pinkerton went on to duplicate his success. He hired other women detectives as a result of Kate's excellent work. When the Civil War began in April 1861, Kate often sent other detectives, men and women, to do dangerous work near or behind Confederate lines. She was so valuable to Pinkerton that he placed her in charge of his Washington office, and she continued to work for him for several years. Ah, now we're com coming close to the end of the story. When Kate died a few years after the war ended, well, at least she got to see the war end successfully, she was buried in Pinkerton's private family plot in Chicago's Graceland Cemetery as a tribute to her service. Her obituary, that's the notice of when you die, her obituary was published nationwide and other women took note of her remarkable achievements. The suffragists Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton wrote about her in The Revolution, their newspaper about women's rights, noting her good service for many years in watching, waylaying, exploring, and detecting. It has often been asked, would you make women police officers, they wrote. It has already been done. And Kate Warren had done it well. And Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, two women who fought successfully eventually for the right of women to vote. So they were of course very impressed with this lady right here who fought for equality and won. How about that? Look at that. It says here that little is known about her early life. She claimed no family and in some ways she was as much a mystery as some of the cases she worked on at the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Like all women of that day, she had no citizenship of her own because she didn't have the right to vote. She died before 1920 when women got the right to vote. The Pinkerton Detective Agency became the Union Intelligence Service during the Civil War, and its role in protecting President Lincoln made it the precursor to the U.S. Secret Service of today. How about that? You know what precursor means? It means that it was the agency before the Secret Service. So it sort of started the sole setup for the Secret Service that required the president to have special protection. It says Kate continued to work for Mr. Pinkerton until her death in 1868 when she was just 38 years old. So young. Why did she die so young? They think pneumonia. But back then, dying so young was not unusual because people got sick and they didn't have the same kind of medicines that they have today. Isn't that the most incredible story? I can't believe that I never read about her until now. Now we all know. Power ladies, power ladies, can I hear you? Can I hear you? Wasn't that an amazing story? I'm totally going to play. Well, she didn't have a love interest, I see. Uh, I wasn't expecting that because she's so beautiful and independent and daring. I mean, I, I totally would have dated her. Maybe we can rewrite the script and then I could become her love interest dashing who comes and sweeps her off her feet. Or you could play Alan Pinkerton, the fellow who hires her. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Oh, wait, 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 I have a better idea. What, what, what? I could play President Lincoln. Yes, I totally have the looks for it. Not the height. I heard that. Uh, have you seen Maleficent? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I haven't seen your lady love. Oh. <laughs> I swear, I can hear her in my dreams. All right, kid, and that was how Kate Warren saved President Lincoln, a piece of true life history that really should make a movie about this one. Starring me! Absolutely starring me. And me. I I'll play Kate. Well, I guess you'd be okay. See you next time, kid, on Kate Time! Story Time!